what happens now with gun control legislation and how will it play out for 2020? We've got Philip Rucker, White House Bureau Chief at the Washington Post and an MSNBC political analyst. Fritz Landman is the CEO of ClassPass, one of the 145 CEOs who signed a letter demanding Congress take action on gun violence. David Jolly, former Republican congressman from Florida and an MSNBC contributor. So, Phil, a little earlier this week, I was reading your article about the president being wary of crossing his base on this issue. But we all know there are polls that show overwhelming support for gun legislation, in some cases, even by a majority of Republicans, even by a majority of gun owners. But is there anything that indicates to you now that he's ready to go out on any limb? Well, Chris, my sources in the administration say that the president wants to try to put forward some kind of package of legislation that will be meaningful. It may not necessarily include any any changes to existing gun laws, any strengthening of background checks, but he's looking at mental health uh, possibilities, uh, some capital punishment ideas, other measures. That is as not well. something that the vast I, majority not. of Americans would think is meaningful to say, I'm going to speed up the amount of time it takes to execute somebody who's already blown away a bunch of kids. Yeah, that's right, Chris. And, and part of the problem here is there's vast majority support, as you noted, in this country, including from Republicans for expanding the background checks program. And yet the National Rifle Association leaders have made an argument that the president finds compelling uh, that by expanding background checks, you have a slippery slope where you start, uh, you know, easing the way for tougher gun restrictions that the president is frankly afraid uh, to put forward because he's afraid of alienating gun rights supporters within his base ahead of the 2020 re-election campaign. Yeah, you know, Congressman, you've been in the middle of this fight, so you understand how it works. Beto O'Rourke got a lot of praise for his empathy, right. but also for being so forceful, even though a lot That's of the right. people on that stage don't want mandatory buybacks. Their concern is that it does play into the Republicans' hands, right? It's just going to energize the Republican base. Yeah, I'm not sure I agree with that politically, though, and here's why. First of all, that was the singular most compelling moment of the night. I think that moment by Beto O'Rourke has staying power, even through the long lens of history, if you will, because it accomplished two things. Politically, it showed bold leadership. And people right now want bold political leadership. One of the reasons Bernie Sanders has staying power is because his economic message is bold. So is Elizabeth Warren's. Donald Trump's, whatever you think of him, he, he brashed onto that stage four years ago, and he was bold in his irreverence, if you will. Beto said, hell yes, we're going to take your firearms. It's bold. But culturally, what he did, Chris, and this is important, politicians too often just follow public opinion. Beto's trying to shape it. Beto is saying no. What is happening see, in the see, House I, is important. I, I agree with you to some extent, but I also was thinking last night, there's a bunch of suburban moms who are going to decide this election. They're yeah. going to, David. And they just dropped their 11, 12-year-olds off at school in the last couple of weeks where they're having to go under live fire drills. <clears throat> I don't know that, I mean, I think that the lead has already been taken. Here's why Beto's addressing those suburban moms, Chris. House Democrats are being persistent and importantly persistent on their package of gun bills and kudos to them. The House bills do not get to the heart of this issue. Universal background checks are important. High magazines are important. But if we don't fundamentally crush the guns on demand culture and get the weapons of war off the street, the House bills don't do that. What Beto is saying is, I will. It's a bold moment and every suburban parent, mothers or fathers, that should resonate. Yeah, I don't know whether it can get done, but we don't know what the new Congress is going to look like. Fritz, um, the El Paso shooting wasn't just the last straw for Beto O'Rourke. It was, for example, for Walmart, the second largest retailer, I think, in the world. They took a stand. To me, when you combine that with all of the CEOs who signed the letter with you, that I mean, I think you can't all be flying in the face of your customer base. Do you or any other CEOs you spoke with believe, as Joe Biden suggested last night, there has been a sea change in how Americans look at this issue? And if so, what pressure beyond a letter can folks like you, CEOs, bring to bear? It's a great question, and it's an honor to be here. For me, this is not a partisan issue. 89% of Americans support universal background. And I think what's changed is that today the American consumer expects to know where people who they're doing business with stand on these issues. And this is a this is a public health crisis. I'm concerned as a 
American, as a business leader, and as a father to my child. So I was proud to sign up for this and ask for just common sense, sensible, bipartisan gun safety legislation and act, ask the Senate to act, along with 145 other CEOs of spanning industries and geographies. Uh, but I'm curious about what is there something you can do beyond that? I'm thinking about, for example, the state of New Jersey, which just uh, decided that what they were going to do is they were going to put pressure on businesses that they do business with, with banks who I think they spend a billion dollars a year alone uh, just in uh, fees that they were going to look very carefully at who they do business with and how they do business. Is there something that corporate America can do that would press this issue? Absolutely. I mean, we can choose where we're going to hire our employees. My company, we have employees in San Francisco, New York City, and in Montana. And when we were selecting to open an office in Montana, I cared about the values of the people who are going to be in that community. I spoke to the governor uh, who's running for president. And we've actually decided to take a stronger stance and actually promote uh, events like March for Our Lives in our application. We're sending people out into the world to have health and wellness experiences. And we decided that we would promote events that are consistent with our values. Every CEO, she's gonna have to decide for herself you know, whether it makes sense for her to take a stand. But on this one, this was an easy decision for us. Phil, do you think Beto is, potential, Beto is potentially just the tip of the iceberg, not necessarily on this specific policy, but on the passion and the frequency of the message? Because in the past, as you well know, that message on guns has always faded quickly until the next large mass shooting. Do you think he is changing the conversation or helping to about how and how often Democrats are going to be discussing guns between now and election day. I think Chris, he certainly is contributing to that change in the conversation. And one of the reasons you see Democrats so impassioned about this issue is because it is such a stark contrast, uh, their beliefs with what the Trump administration and the Republicans in the Senate uh, are doing on guns, which at this point is not really anything. And I imagine as long as this Democratic presidential primary continues, uh, gun control, gun safety, gun violence, this is going to be a huge issue uh, for the base of the Democratic Party. I don't think all the candidates are going to agree with what Congressman O'Rourke proposed in terms of uh, the buyback program. But I do think the passion behind that issue we're going to see from all of those candidates. And did you hear, Fritz, anything promising last night from the 2020 candidates when it comes to guns? I, I mean, yeah, there was a lot of you know discussion about it, and I'm encouraged by it. But I'm more encouraged just by the fact that the vast majority of Americans support universal background checks, red flag provisions. This is just sensible legislation that's bipartisan. Fritz Landman, Philip Rucker, David Jolly, great to see all of you. Thank you so much for being here.